All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry, and today I'm going to show you how you can change your key bindings inside of the DS4 Windows controller driver. This will allow you to change your key bindings for your PS4 or your PS5 controller, because out of the box, all it's doing is mimicking a default Xbox controller, because that's what Windows plays nicely with. So to start out with, let's just talk about what are the settings and where are they? So over here in the top of the window, you've got controllers, profiles, auto profiles, output slots, settings, and logs. Profiles are your settings that you can use for different controllers. Just consider profiles a collection of settings or key bindings that you can swap between. Right now, I've got my default, and I've also got default plus that I made when I was doing a different tutorial. So let's just duplicate default plus, and we'll just call this our fancy profile, and we'll save that. So to edit these profiles, you can do one of two things. You can edit it directly in here, or under controllers, you can select the one you want to use, and then you can literally just click this word edit, and it'll bring open the settings panel. This is the same regardless of where you click edit to edit the profile. In here, it's a little load of stuff all of a sudden. This side over here is kind of like on the right is kind of like the technical settings of setting up dead zones, sensitivity, all that sort of stuff. You can even change like the light bar, touchpad controls, gyro, all that stuff. But what we want is on the left side. So this is a picture of a PS4 controller. And this will also mirror a PS5 controller. They're basically the same layout wise, just the PS4 is a little less advanced. And what you'll do is if you want to change a button, you just find it on this picture, hover over it. And let's say I want to change the touchpad to mirror a mouse. So let's click the right side of the touchpad and it'll pop open this window. What this window allows us to do is select a button that exists either on your typical keyboard, your typical mouse, or on your usual Xbox controller so that we can bind it to an equivalent button. That's how this works. You're just binding it to the equivalent that already exists on your standard PC. So I wanted to do a right click. So over here we have the mouse and I'll select right click. And then over here, I'll select the other side, the left click, and I'll make sure it's selected to be my left click. So now that can function as my mouse because the touchpad itself if you click here, actually, I don't, I'm not sure which part I want to make sure is the touchpad. You can also find the buttons down here in this big list. But what you can do is you can just use the touchpad by default as a mouse on your PC when you're not playing a game. And I don't think you can change that behavior. I think that's just how it works because it's basically the same as a laptop touchpad. And then now with this being like a mouse, I can just scroll around. Oh yeah, it is working right now. I can scroll around and then I could potentially use this as a mouse by clicking left or right. It also responds to taps, just like a mouse pad on a laptop. So that's basically in a nutshell how you re-keybind things. You find the button or the approximate button if you're using a Nintendo controller because this does support Pro Controller and, and Joy-Cons. And then you just find the button inside of this picture here. Like in this case, I want the circle button to mimic the B button, which it already is. And then once I'm all done, I can click save up here at the top. And boom, it's ready. Now there are a few other settings that I'll go over just so you're aware in case you need to change that. So over here, if you're looking to change a dead zone, those settings are right here. Now what is a dead zone? All controllers have phantom inputs on their joysticks. It means they think that they're, you're moving it even though you're not because either it's damage, it's wore out, or it's like a factory defect. Almost every controller has a little bit of something kind of wonkadoo with it. So as a result, they have some settings in here that you can increase the size of the dead zone so that it ignores that input until it reaches a certain amount when it knows you're controlling it and you can change those settings here. I have a tutorial that goes more into detail about that. I'm not going to go into that on this one. And that's split into the left stick. And then down here is the right stick. 
And then you've also got the other buttons to change their sensitivity as well, because the trigger buttons have a lot of sensitivity because you want that when you're playing like a first person shooter. So it responds quickly so you don't get taken out in your match. You can also change your light bar color. This one allows you to pick either by mixing colors with RGB or I think this paint palette button down here that yeah, that sets it to a rainbow. Or we can click on the color itself and we can be like, I want this to be teal. And then it'll do that. And then you can either take it as normal or pass through. You've also got the touchpad. So this is where you change the touchpad settings. I was correct. You can't change that over here. You can have it function as a mouse, as basic control. So it doesn't really function as a mouse at all. Absolute mouse. So it's just a mouse all the time even in a game, or pass-through. I'm not entirely certain what pass-through does, but I'm just going to leave it as a mouse. And then you can play with the different settings here. Similarly, there is a gyro inside of your controllers. Most modern controllers have one. It detects when you're tilting it. If you find that you need that, and it kind of works, but not really, I think it works best when you're plugged in to DS4 Windows. You can change what the buttons do when you tilt it up, when you tilt it down, left, right, all of that stuff, you can click here to similarly assign it to a different button or a different function. And then other is some miscellaneous settings. Generally, you always want this to mimic an Xbox controller because if you could have it just pass through the fact that it's an actual PS4 controller or a PS5 controller, you wouldn't need this driver. Most games have Xbox controller support on Windows if they support controllers at all. Very few will detect a PS4 controller and know what to do with that. So you pretty much always have to have it set to be an Xbox controller. Then you've got some rumble sensitivity, how powerful that is, and you can test it by clicking these buttons so you can feel it. You can change the mouse sensitivity if you want to use the, the touchpad some more. And then down here at the bottom, if you want to reduce the lag when you're doing this over Bluetooth, you would increase the pull rate to a max of one millisecond, so that just keeps pinging your controller a lot to reduce lag. The downside is that'll eat your battery a bit more. Not terribly to my understanding, but enough. And then the other thing you can do to reduce input lag is you can disable enable output data to DS4. That's where your controller talks to the driver and back and forth so it knows what's going on. This will just have the controller sending stuff to the driver and then sending it on to your game if you unselect that. And it cuts down on the lag just a teensy bit, but sometimes that matters in a high stakes game. Now, the other thing that you can do if you don't want to just edit one of the existing profiles is you can create a new profile from scratch. So the next piece is we can click new and that'll bring up this little wizard. And then it'll say, hey, do you want to use a preset option? Choosing no will cause the profile editor to use a completely empty gamepad profile. So if you want to literally bind everything from scratch, you would say no. I'm not quite that crazy, so I'm going to say yes. I want to um, select either a gamepad, a gamepad with mouse-like joystick, a gamepad with high-precision camera, a gamepad with gyro mouse, KB and M controls or KB and M controls with gyro mouse. I'm just going to go with the gamepad. I want it to output an Xbox controller because if your computer knew what to do with a PS4 controller, we wouldn't need this software. So that won't really help us. And then I'm going to click apply. And it's going to pre populate a lot of the settings inside this profile for us. And one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to click the light bar. I'm going to change the color to a nice green. So now my controller will output a green color on the light bar once I've got this saved and set to my controller. And then I can go around and I can click on different buttons and I can bind them to different stuff. Just I'm, gonna, I'm doing it randomly. There's no rhyme or reason. So don't, don't mimic anything you see me changing here. But like I can change these to be any of these buttons right here. Just to make sure you know the joysticks line up. This start button is the start button, all that good stuff. And then when I'm done, I can call this my ultra sweet key bindings. And then I can save that and then I can assign it. Whoops, that's not what I want to do. And then I can assign it right here. 
Now, similarly, if you're setting this up and you don't want to go to the profiles, you can also start a new one from right here with this little pull down arrow. Same thing. So yeah, that's it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. This has been just a brief look at how to set up your key binding profiles inside of DS4 Windows. I hope you found this helpful. Until next time, I've been your host, Larry. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will catch you next time. Bye, everybody, and have a good one.